And what are we doing in the furnace room? Uh, other than sweating my butt off. You think it'd be a little cooler at night in here? It's like god awful. Well, it is a furnace room. Uh, I know. I mean, the plants love it. But I wanted to do a quick update um, on all the things that we started. Uh, was it two Sundays ago? Has it been two weeks? I don't know. Anyway, um, yes, actually, the 6th of March, I did this. Uh, so it's been 11 days or so. So I wanted to show you the ranunculus. So we pre-sprouted those in the last video. And check them out. So we've already got some green growth up top. And if these are the super green mix that are really sprouting. So I'm excited about that because those are mine. Um, and then these are the regular pink and then the 45 days of bloom mix on this side. And you can see this one is really starting to take off. But what's really cool is this. Look at the bottom. Those are all the roots coming through. So even if we don't have green tips yet, this is a very good indication that we have some active root growth. Um, and now it is time to take these little babies out and to pot them up. Um, normally you would pre-sprout them if you live in a warmer zone and you would plant them directly into the ground. Because we are in late March, we still have like deep freezes that happen for a while. So we have to pot ours up for a bit. Hopefully they'll go out, but these have been outside for the last three days, like 24 hours. So they've gone through um, daytime temps and nighttime temps. They've been down to like 38 degrees. Um, I will bring them in if the temperatures drop to like below 28. And if they don't, they will stay outside all day, all night until we get going. Um, if I were to keep them in here, it's too hot, it's too warm. They're gonna grow way too fast and they really are a cool weather flower. So they don't mind being outside in the cool. So I'm just gonna show you potting up. Um, once you, remember when we started them and pre-sprouted them, same with seeds, we used a germination mix. So what we're gonna do when we pot up and they're actively growing is now they need a little bit of like um, nutrition, they need vitamins, they need um, fertilizer, they need stuff to really keep them healthy. So get a quality potting mix. You can do, use whatever you're comfortable with if you have experience doing this, but um, Costa Maine is like super awesome. They have, it's just a very high quality potting mix. So that's what we're gonna use to pot these up because some of these are going in client gardens, some of them are going in my gardens, but they're gonna be potted for a little while. So you really wanna provide them the best pops, possible nutrition that you can, um, and that one will do it. So I'm going to cut this open, hopefully dump it in my little is this gonna uh, smell like the other one did <laughs> no that the what you smell is the the fish fertilizer was that manure no it's fish fertilizer yeah well it was a bunch of bs whatever it was yeah. so this is nice see this is also really like a lofty potting mix um there's perlite in there there's fertilizer, there's um, peat moss. It's a good mix. No wildlife though, right? No wildlife. And you know what? It's really dry. So guess what I have to do? We got a pre-moisten. Were you paying attention during the last video? I have to add water. All right, here we go. In we go. When you've done this for a while, you kind of know like how much it's gonna need. And this is pretty dry, so I, wow, I used all that. That looked like it was gonna go a little bit farther than it did. What's the difference between peat moss and peat soil? Or what is this called again? This is potting mix. Oh, potting mix and potting soil. What's the difference? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> then why do they, Call them different. It's whatever you want to call your, your potting mix, potting soil. I'm going to put these in here because they keep getting in the way. I don't want them to get filthy. I guess white's not probably the best thing to. I don't think long sleeve shirts it's are a hot. good thing in this furnace you room. You know what? It's terrible in here. You may have to change your attire here mid video. Yeah. I know. Did you guys all see the bird post today? So. 
Be really super excited because it's been really warm. Like we're having an, a, an abnormally warm week this week, temperature wise. So we've had today alone, bluebirds scouting the houses. And I saw a barred owl, like huge barred owl on my way home today. And he was so big that he stood out like a sore thumb, like this bright white ball in the tree. And I pulled over and I was like a tourist. Literally, I'm like snapping pictures like I was on safari. He was like the most beautiful bird and he was so big. Like I was just shocked because usually you hear them in the trees. Um, they're the owls that go like, who cooks for you? That's like the saying that they, you know, put to the owl call. And he was just so big and I, it was just, he didn't care. I got out, it was raining, didn't even care. I'm out there like, <laughs> and the, I wish I had my zoom camera because that was a, like a once in a lifetime deal. It's kind of weird that he was out during the day like that. Or maybe it's weird that I just noticed him, but he was super white. He looked like a huge moth. I know they do, right? With black specks in the, it's kind of cool. <clears throat> anyway, so let's get into this. Actually, before I get into this, because this is probably gonna just be a lengthy process, let me update you on something else. I wanted to show you about the ginger. So this ginger, has been, it wants like super warm, like tropical, 85, 95 degree temperatures. So I have it on a heat mat, which you can tell, nothing's sprouting yet, but I wanna show you something. The whole idea behind ginger and putting it in here is so that the eyes start to sprout. Look at this, sprouting, 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 sprouting. It's happening. like. This is gonna be successful. And I have not watered them since I put them in here. So there's a bunch of pieces, like puzzle pieces in here. This piece, not really starting yet. Still firm, but it hasn't really started yet. That one smells. What? Must have oh, gingivitis. Um, really? See, look, see the growth points starting? Yes. So this is exciting. There's one there. So this is what I wanted. This is the hardest part of, of, gin, of sprouting ginger. Is taking... Oh, here's like one of these little mini pieces. Oh, and see, look. This has like a little piece of mold starting on it. See that? So I'm going to actually take that piece out. Because I don't want to... I don't want to ruin my, my crop. But anyway, so we have... Ooh, look at this one. Look at that. So that's exciting. So it's working. I probably should water. It feels a little bit dry. But anyway, this has been on a heat mat nonstop. It's been under the lights nonstop. And things are happening, even though it may not look like it. Things are happening here. So that's exciting. So I'm going to put this back on and remember to water it within the next day, I think. So that's pretty cool. So, so far, so good. Now, let's take a look. We're gonna get into this. These are pink. So I'm gonna put this tag in there. I'm gonna pull this out. Why did the middle ones grow more than the two side ones? Yeah, could be a, the variety. These are super green. This is just plain pink, which seems to be the farthest behind. And this one, which has a mix of things that are pretty similar to the super green, see how they're up pretty good? And ones that are just starting out. This is a mix of them. So probably just the variety. So I'm gonna lift these up carefully and find the corm. Wow, this is happy. This might be a little too happy for my for my little pot it's in, but wow. It's kind How of, do you know it's happy? Come on, look at the size of those roots. Looks like it's nervous. It's growing a lot of gray hairs. <laughs> oh my gosh, so cool though. So anyway, we're gonna add a little bit of potting mix to the bottom of this. And then in the pot it goes. I feel like these need bigger pots, but you know what? I don't have enough room for this yet. So here we go. Now it's gonna be, the roots are gonna have plenty of room to feed. And you're basically gonna plant them at the same exact height that they were in the sprouting tray. Which is not always easy to do. 
a messy job. If I had gloves on, I think I would really ruin some of the roots because you can't really feel with gloves on, so not my favorite. Boy, look at that rock on that finger. Your husband must really love you. Mm, yes, he does. So don't pack it in too much, right? No, just, just you want it level with where it really was growing in and just giving them a little bit. So that looks like normal. That looks good to me. Does that look good to you? Yes, it does. So we'll just leave that there. And then I'm gonna go through and pretty much pot all of these up because they're ready. They are like, I mean, these are sprouting. Check this out, holy cow. Even the small corms. How many did you plant in there? Wow, I think there's 20 in there. Look at that though, yes. This is what we want. This is exciting. It's exciting for me anyway. So I'm going to get these all potted up and then we'll come back and I don't want to bore you with my really uh, lengthy process of potting each one of these up because you know, each one is like my little baby. And I've never done this before, like growing the ranunculus, so I don't know. The roots seem pretty tough though, like they're not really dainty. They're not like kind of breaking off with pulling them out and stuff. So they feel pretty fibrous and, um, so, but now they'll each have like a good amount of space to kind of sprawl out and they'll have their own set of nutrients that they won't have to fight for. Like, look at this little guy. He looks like he was just now waking up. So we'll see. All right, so we'll be back when I'm done planting all of these up. Holy cow. We are rocking now. Look at this. Holy cow. Look at this. Ah! This is like three different ones, but I may wait it a, a tad too long to get them uh, potted up. So what would happen if you just planted all those in a bunch? They would just like kill each other off? Well, they'd they? all fight for nutrients and stuff. I don't want that to happen. Look at this, this is so awesome. And there are tons in here. Holy cow, I'm gonna need like multiple trays, but this is great. Look at the mess, the mess has begun. Yeah, the dog doesn't care. Sleeping right in it. I know. She gets bored when I'm in here, but... She makes a good drop cloth. <laughs> She's my little buddy. Now if I can just keep the frost and the deep freezes from killing these, I'll be all set. I'll be well on my way to some blooms, because this is probably the easy part, right? I mean, it, I didn't really have to do anything except stick them in the tray. Yeah, but we've been lucky with the temperatures. What happens if it goes below freezing? Well, they can handle like to like 20, I think between 25 and 28, I think they can handle it because um, they're cold tolerant. They actually don't mind the cold. The problem comes when you put them out and it drops to like 20 degrees. And then you're like, Ugh, you have to like cover them with frost fabric. And that's where the babying comes in. And that's where our climate is not the best fit for these. So, but we're gonna do our best. I mean, gotta try it once, right? I don't think every season is gonna be suitable for ranunculus, but how do you know? Unless you try and you work through it. Sounds good. I guess I'll put the camera down and help you. Yeah, separate these, these babies again. out. This is awesome. And, and it's amazing because look at the small corms, Look at how tiny this corn was. Like it was pretty small, but we've already got multiple sprouts coming out. Oh, and out of the pink ones, we only had two corms. They're still pretty firm, so I'm not giving up on them, but we only had two out of like the 20 that didn't sprout. And I think, and they don't feel mushy, so I'm gonna keep them going. We'll see if we can pot them up anyway and get a little, ambition out of them wake up it's march man march madness mess Look. mess mess but hey sometimes you gotta 
make a mess to make something beautiful, right? I never, I never claim to be a neat gardener. My, my gardens are neat, but the way they get there, not the neatest. Um, yeah, so this is done. I still have to do my, um, my super greens, as you, if you can see. And I have to find more trays because if you notice, holy cow. This is how the this is how the plants expand. You take like a hundred ranunculus and you expand them out to their own pots. Now they're going back outside. It's 51 degrees out right now and rainy, which is great. Um, so what are you going to do with all these plants? Well, um, two trays are going to client gardens and those are going in mine. So where is this one? You must have planted this one. He's upside down. See this little guy? See how he's got a white root, or not the white roots, but the white tip? Uh -huh. That means that it hasn't hit sunlight yet. And you want to plant them at the same um, depth that they were growing so that he's going to get buried. So that's another tip to look out for. If the green sprouts are out, you plant it even with the green sprouts. But if they're not, and you have a white um, tip, you're still going to bury that a little bit. So that's why there's some green tips hanging and some... That's why, yeah, there's why, that's why there's some greens here. And then some of these aren't buried and some of them are just coming out. Like this little guy is just starting to turn green um, here. And you can see this one coming up. See how he's kind of white underneath? So he was just starting to break the soil surface. He'll all adjust, but... Um, yeah, so that's exciting. Um, I also want to show you. So I started some echinacea. See these guys? And I have really dirty fingers, sorry. Um, but these are the varieties that I'm growing because echinacea blooms its first year. Watch out for that garbage can. Yeah. Um, and so this is interesting. I, I cold stratified the common milkweed and I cold stratified the tropical milkweed and so far out of the tropical you know this is the one that I was like is this a perennial the guy promised me I had one sprout and now I'm seeing two little green ones here so these are actually sprouting later than the common milkweed but I'm getting some milkweed so this is going to go in for my um, host plants for the monarchs and this needs water I can tell just by how light the tray is I'm such a bad plant mom sometimes um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. The other stuff's day lilies, which I've gone over multiple times. And check these out. So these, oh, I thought I'd thin this, but I have two growing here. One of these is going to get its head chopped off. It's so sad. Um, but look it, this is why you need to thin. See the difference? I have like, this is stocked. And while it's like, ooh, that's great. It's really not great because they only have this little bit of space to grow in. Um, and they're going to get pinched back. So you really only want one per cell. So it's such a sad chore, isn't it? Um, yeah, but if you were going to get a bigger pot, you could save them, right? Uh, the thing is, you don't want, their roots are going to, are all tangled. So you don't want to just pull them out. You want to snip them off. Because if you pull them out, you disrupt the roots of the one you're keeping. So you're not supposed to do that. I'm sure some people try to do that. I don't know if it will stump the plant. Um, like, for example, this this right here look at how many are growing in here like if i if i pop this out let's just do it because i have a bunch i mean i'm all about experimentation right so look at that of its happy home all right so as you can see these are like already all the roots have reached the bottom and they're they're a jumbled mess you can tell already so you're only going to get like one plant? If I want it, well, if I wanted to dissect it, I guess I could do it. I could get two, right? It's just there's so many roots tangled up. I don't know if I want to mess with the plant that I'm saving's roots. You know what I'm saying? You, you sound really like my dentist. You don't really want to disturb the roots of this one. So this one's going to get, this one will be happy because I'm about to fortify it. This is going to grow like Jack and the Beanstalk. This one, it's, it's graduating from germination mix to like big boy food. 
But anyway, so, you know, only one of those is going to make it. And then I have this guy. And what do I do with this little dude? We're going to give him his own pot. Welcome to the best year of your life. Oh, my gosh. Aren't Until you, you start lucky? pinching him. Yeah. One guy's going to get his cheeks pinched. But for now... And you know what? I'm gonna show you. This is terrible. You're gonna pinch them? I'm gonna, this one is the one I'm gonna keep. It's the biggest one. So you snip it right at the base. Sorry about that. Zoe! Sounds like our dog's going after the cat. Yeah, she's not very cat friendly. Yeah. But we have a super duper cat, so he's I like, don't think she's gonna be garden friendly either. You're gonna be in for a rude awakening. We'll have to do some Zoe! Training. All right. We'll have to do some what? So anyway, this guy is gonna have a, we'll have to do some training. I mean, that's why we have a trainer. Yeah. Try and curb some behavior we don't like. And she's got a couple things that um, we have to sort of, train her not to do like but barrier bones in your shade garden yes especially that anyway so these are all going to get watered up but that's a quick update i mean i think it's a quick update um of what we have going on and my sweet peas are outside those are going to get pinched back pretty soon um and then we just wait the weather out so there we go sounds good you better save your cat from the dog <laughs> i know poor thing